presentation of Dialogue on Idaho Public Television is made possible through the generous support of the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore family's legacy of building the great state of Idaho. Coming up, Idaho's school system consistently ranks near the bottom of national education assessments. Administrators, teachers, parents, and business leaders have all been trying to help move the dial. But it's been tough. So what might help? I talk with two education experts who've led high-performing school systems in other states to get their views. That's Dialogue next. Stay tuned. Hello and welcome to Dialogue, I'm Marcia Franklin. Whether it's test results, money spent on schools, or the numbers of students going to college, when it comes to many measurements of K-12 education in Idaho, our state ranks near the bottom. So what might it take to turn that around? With me are two people who've been at the helm of school systems that have experienced success. Not that it's always been easy, as we'll hear, but they'll share their thoughts on what they think works. First, let me introduce David Driscoll. Dr. Driscoll was the Commissioner of Education for Massachusetts from 1998 to 2007. He's a former president of the Council of Chief State School Officers and the outgoing chair of the National Assessment Governing Board. He began his career as a mathematics teacher and also served as a local school superintendent. Now, under Dr. Driscoll's leadership as state commissioner, Massachusetts schools were consistently ranked as among the very best in the nation. Welcome to you. Thank you, Marsha. It's nice to Glad have to you here. here. Also joining me is Eric Smith. Dr. Smith was the Commissioner of Education for Florida from 2007 to 2011. A former mathematics and science teacher, Dr. Smith also served as a district superintendent in several states and senior vice president for the College Board, which administers the SAT. During his administration as commissioner, the Florida school system won a $700 million Race to the Top grant from the federal government. It's nice to have you here as good, well. Good to be here. Thank you very much. Now my guests are in Boise to take part in the Ed Sessions, a series of lectures sponsored by the J.A. and Katherine Albertson Foundation. For more information, check out the Dialogue website. You know, I've been in this state for 25 years, and I have to say as a reporter, I have met phenomenal teachers in this state, phenomenal students in this state, and administrators, principals alike. So, so you know, when I see some of the data, it's, it's a little bit of a head scratcher because, you know, I know that there are excellent folk out there. What are we to make when we, we see this disconnect, you know, in, in a state like Idaho? Well, one of the frustrating things about public education is just what you've mentioned. Every state, every district, uh, every school has uh, highs and lows, and it's, it's amazing. I mean. Uh, if you look at any state in the nation, you will find outstanding schools. And you'll also find schools that are doing very poorly. So it's that consistency we just don't seem to be able to, to get to in, in public education. You would think that the schools that perform well consistently would be the ones that others would try to copy, but it doesn't seem to turn out that way. So it, and it's true in all of our states. When you look at our system now, and the quality counts data, which is one measure, it puts Idaho's chance for success at, at about a C, um, things like the teaching profession at D minus, school finance at D minus. What do you look at when you come into a state mm -hmm. like this, and what would be the first things that you would attack to yeah, yeah. start a Great, great question. You know, I would, I would uh, look at data like that. Quality counts, I think, is a great measure. It was an issue that I chased after as commissioner all the time. I'm very, very aware of the, the quality counts information. But I would uh, spend a little bit of time looking at what uh, Idaho is doing very, very well. And I'd, I'd, I'd begin by focusing on that. And I think there's some, there's some evidence in quality counts and other, other measures that say that, that, that Idaho has some great strength. And I'd start with a focus on what Idaho is doing well, and then I'd begin to look at those things that we have opportunity for great improvement. And I think uh, you know, starting to build a framework of strategies that could be communicated well with teachers, with parents, with elected officials, with business leaders, and developing a consens consensus around that path forward, I think would be a, would be a key place to begin. Well, let's just jump right into some of these mm -hmm. potential factors that you look at. School funding. I mean, this comes up a lot in, in our state. We uh, spend about $7,000 per student. 
Massachusetts spends $14,000 per student, Florida about 9000 mm. So is this the nut graph? Is this the mm. centerpiece here it, when you look at it and you say you're not spending enough money? So one of the uh, materials at the Albertson Foundation, which has tr tremendous data, by the way, one of the things that they gave to us was a scattergram of uh, the amount of money being spent at, uh, versus achievement. And it's all over the place. And if you look at Massachusetts, it's the same. Cambridge, Massachusetts spends the, the most uh, of any district in Massachusetts, and it hardly has the best achievement. So the correlation between achievement and uh, money spent just isn't there. M my own view is that there is a minimum amount needed. You can't, you can't have huge class sizes. You can't have in inadequate. So that's why in Massachusetts we developed a foundation budget that brought everybody up to at least a foundation. And there's a requirement that every local district has a minimum contribution. Now the richer districts spend more than that, right? Uh, we have which a still, which as still well does here. that equity, but. Yeah, I think I think uh, I've seen the data in in uh, Idaho, and it's a it's a t difficult political issue because the the state legislators look down and to the right. How is a new formula going to help my districts? And so it's hard to get a statewide consensus on it. But I think um, tweaks and and well, taking the current f formula and trying to, as Eric said before, look at what's working. But then look at the areas that aren't. Well, how and much see more if would tweets. you lift it up from seven? I mean, you know, there's a huge disparity between fourteen thousand dollars per student in Massachusetts and seven in. in well, I just make one, yeah, I, I would say that the, the the first thing I would look at is 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 there evidence, other evidence that says that your schools are not adequately funded, or is there great disparity in the adequacy of funding between schools and. If you go to some schools, you see old books or no right. books. Do or you see four old day weeks or whatever? Uh, school These kind of things that are, that, are, that are just not, not equal in terms of, of delivery. And, and is it a funding issue or a judgment issue? That's one point. And if so, then if it requires more, you find more. But, but, but I'd say the other thing that's really critical is, and I think is an issue here in Idaho, is the consistency of funding. Uh, educators that are serious about their business have got to have more than one year to plan for the future. And uh, whether it's a purchase of an instructional program, they've got to implement it and it's got to last for two or three years. So getting consistency in that funding over time, not ups and downs, uh, is, is critical. What do you do in a state, though, where the, the pool of money to draw upon, i.e., mm -hmm. the salaries of people that live here, uh, the sales tax revenues, whatever, mm -hmm. is much smaller? How do you lift? Because it, it sounds like both of you are saying some more money is needed, but how do you how do you get it from a population? That so, has so I think that I, I think income? that um, uh, every state is unique for a variety of reasons, and Idaho certainly has uh, challenges that Florida and Massachusetts don't, and, and vice versa. We have the highest percentage of special needs kids in the in the country. 85% uh, of our budgets are salaries, and to live in Boston or Cambridge or some of all the way, it was quite, so our salaries are higher. So, I mean, I think there's, there's some balancing here. Uh, but I think the, the, the larger issue is uh, uh, what can you do with the money you have? It's not, it's not a function of if you get X number of dollars, therefore uh, uh, student achievement will increase. I think there are other issues that need to be looked at in conjunction with financing. If financing is a big problem, fine. But in this state, and, and give you credit for, uh, for addressing it, you have uh, state scores that show that 80%, essentially 80% of your kids are proficient. NAEP says half of that are for, between 40 and 50. So you've already taken a huge step that I think both Eric and I would say, which is you've set higher expectations and standards for your kids well, let, and let telling me, the truth. Let me ask you about that, because that's the next piece besides funding is for you know, a parent or somebody to assess a school system, look at the, look at the tests. You mentioned that uh, the uh, the Idaho tests show a high proficiency in certain areas, and you mentioned NAEP, which is a National Assessment of Educational Progress. Those those tests show a much different picture. Almost half is proficient. What is a parent, you know, looking in on the system, trying to decide if Idaho is a place to move? Which test are they supposed to believe? On this. Think, the data know, is all know, over the place. This, this guy here is the expert on NAEP, and I, I've learned a great deal from him about it. But I, you know, I've always used uh, NAEP data. It, it's, a, it's a sampling, 
uh, mm -hmm. population, so it's not going to tell you what school X right. or Y is going to be doing, but it, it's a sampling of your performance. And it's a and national National, and, and it, 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 it is kind of like the, you know, the gold standard. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the backstop, and you can tell where, you're, where your state is moving or not uh, based on some of that multi-year performance data. But I, I think, you know, again, Idaho has done some phenomenal work and needs to be careful about how they take care of this opportunity that they have because they, they have moved to, to shared standards with other states uh, through the Common Core and they've, they've moved to a shared assessment with other states. But when you see that disparity, doctor, yeah. between the national exam and granted it's just a, uh, it's not surveying every student and the Idaho data which mm -hmm. is almost d double, shows us a double proficiency, w which is correct. I mean it could be that this, the standards for Idaho are less rigorous and so that's why the scores are higher. I think you can draw that conclusion. I don't think there's a question about that. You should take the NAEP data. That, that's consistent and correct. So any state that has much higher, you don't have to be exact, but um, mm -hmm. double, uh, clearly doesn't have uh, proper standards, so the, the right expectations for kids. One state has uh, over 80 percent proficient and yet under NAEP less than 15 percent proficient. So they've clearly set too too low a bar but as Eric points out uh, Idaho has now joined the smarter balanced so uh, you and mean the, the common core the, com state. the assessment for mm -hmm. uh, those states that there are two assessment park and smarter balance that have emerged that are uh, consistent with common core and Idaho has chosen smarter balance along with 20 something other states so you are soon going to have, first of all, there'll be results. And the first thing that happens when the Smarter Balance results come out and the Park results come out, people are going to compare it to NAEP. And they know that. And, we, and actually, we've, we've worked with both consortia. Mm -hmm. so, de, so Idaho will have results that are comp mm -hmm. comparable to other states because they're taking the same test. Testing. You, you, you're a proponent of testing. I think testing is very important. You're a proponent of lots of testing. Um, uh, I wouldn't go that far, quite, but I'm a proponent <laughs> of testing. I think testing is important. Yeah. yeah. Uh, teachers, some parents, um, you know, are very concerned about what they see as over testing mm -hmm. right now. Yeah, and I, I, I think that, you know, first of all, what, you know, the old adage, wh what, what gets measured gets done, what's, Im what's important gets measured. I think those those things are very true, and if the education of the children in Idaho is important, people are going to want to know whether it's being effective and efficient. Particularly, parents are going to know whether whether the job in my school is making a difference in my child's life. And the only way to really know that is is through some form of a, a, a legitimate assessment that gives you a good measure. So, how do you respond to and the teachers who are concerned about over testing? Well, and I think when that gets broken down. Uh, you know, for in, in, in most states, uh, I assume Idaho as well, you know, the, the big mandated state is an end of year assessment required through No Child Left Behind. And uh, so there's one year, one, day, one, one day, maybe two, that there's an assessment out of a 180 day roughly school year. Uh, so I, now what, what leads up to that might be a whole battery of other assessments to make sure kids are ready for that test. So I don't think the state, I personally don't think that the state mandate uh, or, or the, of, of, of an assessment uh, annually to see whether or not progress is being made is too onerous, is, is, is too onerous at all. And, and assessment, uh, you, you've got to tell me where in life do you go after K-12 school, after graduating from high school, where do you go that you're not going to be met with some form of pretty important assessment? whether it be college or whether it be a, a medical degree, a law degree, a licensor, licensure to be a, a welder, uh, where are you going to go? That there's some, and so assessments in, in our society and in, in life in general are, are pretty important elements that kids need to be ready for. So uh, as I, I disagree slightly with my colleague, although <laughs> the Florida data is just fabulous, by the way. You said you can actually track a student all the way oh, yeah. through yes, can, yeah. from kindergarten we, we, into the junior Nagby college. used Florida's data. College. It's just terrific stuff. But um, I, I would disagree. I think I think uh, there is too much testing mandated by the feds. I don't think we have to test every year three through eight at the at the state level. 
Uh, I think you could tell, we used to test four, six, and eight in reading, in math, three, five, and seven in reading, and then let the locals use formative assessment, et cetera. It's more than one or two days by the time you do science and history. And, That's what I've heard. And lead up, and, and of course, people feel they have to teach to the test because of the pressure and so forth and so on. So I think that, that is an issue that's somewhat legitimate. On the other hand, far more serious than that, uh, if, if people want to say there's too much testing, there's too little analysis of the data. We have a wonderful example in Boston, Orchard Gardens Elementary School. Uh, five years ago, it was the lowest performing school in Boston and inherited 50% uh, of the kids from the poorest uh, uh, school in Boston, in Roxbury, uh, poorest uh, children into the school. So they had, a, they had a low performing school and then they had low performing kids come in, so the mix was strange. They are now the highest performing, they had the highest percentage of increase. Well, if you talk to the principal, uh, who, who was a new principal, the, the way he changed it, I mean, first of all, he changed a lot of the teachers and so forth, but um, it was all focused on the data. Uh, he has the data on the, as you walk in the school, here are the results. So his fourth grade teachers sit down when we get the results back, and by the way, the results are by, by question. So you know how many kids got the question right or wrong, they even know what they chose as the wrong if it's a multiple choice. They dove into the data, and as a result of using that data, changed instruction. That doesn't happen enough. So as much as I sympathize with too much testing, it really uh, bothers me that we have all this data that schools, some schools use in a wonderful way, other schools kind of ignore, and that's his problem. Let me ask you about another kind of testing, which is, which is very controversial as well, which is testing of teachers, uh, whether it's testing their content knowledge or their pedagogy. You know, um, there's just, a lot of rancor right now around this issue. A lot of fear. A lot of, you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, I think there. Yeah, you know, there. There is. There, understandably, there's there's concern, particularly with educators, about about this practice. But, uh, you know, it, it is true that, that the most important element in in uh, getting a better result with children is going to be the quality of the teachers in our classroom. And so, whether it be on the licensure side or the or the graduate the the college degree that is earned and the rigor to get that degree, to get the best uh, talent uh, out of college and into our classrooms and increasing that, that trajectory is going to be critical for Idaho or any state in the country. The second is to make sure that, that, that the performance in the classroom matches, uh, matches the, the quality we say that that teacher has. And in general, across the country, most evaluations for teachers are, are stellar. I mean, we we don't we don't we don't have a bad teacher out there, and uh, they just don't exist. Uh, yet our kids are coming in at less than fifty percent proficient, and so there is a disconnect. And I do you know I've always been a strong advocate that at least a portion of a teacher's work, as with anybody else's work, your work I would imagine, has got to be tied to to the work you're doing. And so whether that be through an assessment or other forms of, of measures, uh, samples of student work other kinds of ways, but there needs to be a, a connection between the things that you're asked to do, paid to do by the state, uh, are you making a difference with the children that come in without those skills, do they leave with those skills? So our, our whole law was based on three very simple principles. Higher standards and expectations for students, and that was our testing program, including a 10th grade test. High stakes test. That they had to pass to get a diploma. High standards and higher standard expectations for schools and districts, and we had accountability uh, uh, measures there. And then higher standards and expectations for educators. And by the way, this issue about uh, uh, every teacher across the country being rated uh, highly, I don't know why that's the teacher's problem. I think that's the principal's. Mm -hmm. Teachers get blamed for that, which I don't mm -hmm. think they should. But uh, So we instituted a teacher test. Never had it before in Massachusetts. Uh, very unpopular. And yet, 61% of our initial candidates, and, and we implemented it in the wrong way. It's why I became commissioner, so I'm always happy for the mistakes of others before me. But uh, they, they should have piloted it. It, should have, it, it, it. it doesn't have to be onerous. Which, by the way, the teachers are saying about Common Core should right. be piloted. But it, well, and it is being piloted. Yeah. In fact, Idaho kids took it as a pilot this right. past year. Right. So, uh, so and, but what it revealed after all the dust settled and we uh, was that too many teachers did not have the content knowledge they needed, particularly in mathematics at the elementary level was a, was a major one. And reading, by the way, the actual content knowledge about how to read. So I think teacher testing 
proved itself in Massachusetts because look at our math results. And I, and I think teachers would admit, even though they didn't like the test, Highly once they got used to it and knew they had to do it, and we weren't backing off, so they had to pass just like the kids. We weren't backing off, so you have to meet the expectations. They were reasonable expectations. It works. This issue, this education policy, is so tense at times, has mm -hmm. been in, in our state, is nationally uh, right now as we speak. And just, uh, you know, there, there will be some teachers who will look at your resumes and say, hey, you, you're both associated with very conservative groups, Fordham Institute in your case, and Jeb Bush's mm -hmm. Chiefs for Change, which mm -hmm. uh, Idaho Superintendent Tom Luna was associated with. The, these are people in their view, these are institutions in their view that don't support teachers, that are for things that are anathema to them. Well, I, 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 I for first absolutely disagree. I, I, uh, you know, the Chiefs for Change and other, other groups, Governor Bush, uh, uh, incredible advocates for classroom teachers. And they're also incredible advocates for, for children. And uh, that they want the best for both. And so I think uh, these policy changes uh, and, and adjustments are uh, with an expectation that we can do better as a nation, that we can do better as, uh, with, with our but there's educational There's a fear it's moving towards privatization, or I've seen words like corporatization yeah. of education, yeah. you know, so, and, and, so, and yeah. you know, that the public yeah. school system as we know it is. It is this it's this fear mongering is, is amazing to me. Uh, it, 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 I'm not sure it happens in any other. It certainly doesn't happen in other countries. I mean, when they go to set standards, they set standards and they sit on a page and people like them and they implement it, figure out how to implement them. Here, we debate them for 10 years. We accuse them of communism and everything else. It's, it's crazy. Uh, for the record, I'm a registered Democrat in Massachusetts. Uh, and I kid check a fan of Fordham Foundation about that all the time. Uh, Eric and I have talked about this, the, the idea of working for a Republican administration. I worked for Mitt Romney and Ted Kennedy at the same time and never had a problem because the issue is not about politics. It's not about those kinds of issues. So in education, it's higher standards and expectations. How do you get that out of it? Because we see in our state is highly politicized and then I think you the have log to just, jam happens. Yeah, no, I think you just can't get deflected by it. You have to, yeah. you have to just full speed ahead. If you, if you believe in what you're doing, I always say I get, when we instituted the test, I get burned in effigy. Uh, the interesting thing seriously, is Seriously, you got yeah, burned in effigy. But the interesting thing is it doesn't hurt. So, uh, you Meaning know, you because you, 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 you because they burn it, something and, and it's it not take, you. <laughs> yeah, it does take it does take really strong leadership to yeah. uh, to drive through it. The, the, you know, our uh, anyone that chooses to use our children for political advantage uh, should be shamed. Uh, that it, it is about uh, it is too important to the lives that we have responsibility for every day to make this a political football. Well, and so there there should be an active. Uh, active effort on on uh, on out of all parties and and independents uh, to really find common ground around what's what's going to be the best service for children and, and, and uh, you know making sure we have the best teachers in the classroom is not a political agenda uh, making sure that our children have high standards and high expectations should not be a political agenda making sure that we know whether or not our kids are achieving and our teachers are performing and are adequately funded should not be a, a political agenda. So. Two other points I might get, we're rapidly running out of yeah. time. Um, Idaho has a pretty good graduation rate, all mm -hmm. things considered. Looking at other states, still not perfect. It's somewhere between 80 and 90 percent. The, the go-on rate, as it's called, to mm -hmm. college, not, not, not good, as good as uh, 47 percent mm -hmm. or something like that going to college and, and it drops even lower when you look at how many high school freshmen actually eventually complete college, something like one in ten from some data. This is important, I assume, to, to both of you when you yeah. look at districts and their functioning is how many children yeah. are actually going. Because yeah, some people uh, would say college is not, shouldn't right. be well, think, a... Yeah. Well, uh, 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 Eric will talk about the tremendous data he has, and so he, he knows exactly uh, into the workforce. But this is a huge problem across, it's not just Idaho's problem, this is a problem in Massachusetts. This is what they talk about, developmental courses and remediation. You have literally hundreds of thousands of kids who graduate from high school. In our case, we know they at least passed our test, so we have right. basic skills. Uh, they go on to community colleges. They take uh, some kind of an entrance test, AccuPlacer or something. They, they don't pass. They go into non-credit bearing courses. They drop out and, and they use up their financial aid. It's a terrible, this remediation and developmental courses is a terrible national problem. 
So we've got we and 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 the K to 12 system has to has to own this because we're sending kids out and they ought to be able to at least persist uh, and, and they're not. And now there are other factors obviously involved, society and other uh, things. But, how much it costs but it's a big and, problem and other and, things. Uh, Another challenge, uh, just this year, we are now majority minority in the public schools. Uh, that's in, not, in it's the, not necessarily you, a big problem. Could, I, I think you, you, that was you a have, question. Yeah, another, have, yeah, is it another challenge? You, it, you, it, you have demographic shifts, which have probably been going on for decades, and without maybe it's accelerating, maybe not. Uh, you know, I, you know, Florida certainly is an example of a, of a state that has had huge demographic shifts, and and we do do so quite often with regularity. Have demographic shifts of uh, uh, Haitians, Cubans, uh, uh, Central American, South America, Europeans. And so we, but the English language, English language part of that is is, is huge, is huge. That's and a challenge. Yeah, and so uh, again, uh, making sure that you have solid research-based decision making, data-driven decision making around the best uh, pol state policy and instructional strategies to support schools to deliver with with children. How quickly uh, you expect kids to be able to, to move to uh, English-based proficiency. And, uh, and and then measure the daylights out of that. One of the great things about No Child Left Behind, a lot of critics for it, mm. one of the great things that it did was it's put a, put a very clear spotlight on, uh, on the inequities that existed between uh, language learners and, and poverty and, 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 uh, and, and minorities and special needs. And it elevated a great deal of our, our kids. So I think uh, monitoring that work is, is gonna be key. Uh, uh, We've got, me, yeah. Yeah, let me just t tell you this because it's important to know. We are losing ground when you look internationally without question. More and more countries are going by us, uh, student achievement. And so we have problems. But as we talked about before, there are pockets of achievement everywhere. And if you look at America, American student achievement based, based on NAEP testing long-term trend, nine-year-olds, 13-year-olds, uh, it has actually increased over the last 10 years for all groups whites, Hispanics, Asians, all groups have, blacks, have all increased. So, so we're doing better optimism. in terms of student achievement. The problem is the mix. There's less whites and so forth. So that brings the overall uh, score down. But actually achievement is in, improving. In Florida, so. our Hispanic students uh, outperform many white students in other states on NAEP. So there is so things to build on, but what we need to get consistent, get the politics out of it, focus on high standards and expectations, the data, and really focus on student achievement and, and not this other stuff. Well, great. Thanks so much. And, and both of you have generously agreed to stay for a little bit longer to do to tape an extra with me. I really appreciate it. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for the main program. You've been listening to Dr. David Driscoll, the former commissioner of education for Massachusetts, and Dr. Eric Smith, the former commissioner of education for Florida. For more information, please check out the Dialogue website. Just go to IdahoPTV.org and click on Dialogue. That's also where you'll find the extra that I just mentioned. Thanks for tuning in. Presentation of Dialogue on Idaho Public Television is made possible through the generous support of the Laura Moore Cunningham Foundation, committed to fulfilling the Moore family's legacy of building the great state of Idaho. Check out our website, become a friend on Facebook, or follow us on Twitter.